uh, I'm not optimistic <laughs> either with the prospect of denuclearization. Uh, in 2022, uh, uh, North Korea finds itself confronted with both severe challenges and fresh opportunities. In terms of uh, challenges, North Korea has been suffering from both harsh UN sanctions and self-imposed isolation, resulting from its efforts to ward off the COVID-19 pandemic. This has led to near complete suspension of contacts uh, between North Korea and the outside world, which the previous international sanctions imposed against North Korea have not managed to accomplish. It entails almost complete cutoff of the inflow of hard currencies, as well as equipment and material necessary for its nuclear and missile programs. The impact on its economy must also be quite harsh. Despite the self-imposed isolation, North Korea eventually went through an eruption of the COVID infections in the past few months anyway. Although no one can fully uh, assess the extent of the outbreak of, uh, and its impact on North Korea economy and livelihood because of the lack of access of the information. Recent official account from North Korea suggests that the pandemic was quite serious, at least for a while. And even Kim Jong-un himself was infected. Given the highly infectious nature of the virus, the efforts to contain the pandemic must be quite harsh. This is additional bad news for its nuclear program and its economy. In terms of opportunities, North Korea has found China and Russia more sympathetic to its position and demands. This is the case even before the outbreak of the Russell Ukraine war. For example, both China and Russia publicly urged the international community to consider North Korea's legitimate concerns and lift some sanctions to reward North Korea for suspension of its nuclear program, uh, nuclear tests, and uh, pave way for dialogue and negotiation on denuclearization. Uh, Russia and China did this in part because of deterioration of relations between these two countries and the U.S. The outbreak of the Russia-Ukraine war and the heightened tension between China and the U.S., especially over Taiwan, have further consolidated their sympathy and support for North Korea. And now, even uh, generated support to North Korea, uh, more support to North Korea. To North Korea, this means that both Russia and China are likely to resist additional sanctions against North Korea on its missile tests, and perhaps even in the extreme circumstances, it's a test on nuclear weapons. Perhaps in part because of this, North Korea has toughened its position toward the US and resumed missile tests in recent months. While it has refrained from conducting nuclear weapon tests so far, it may consider doing so now. And it believes, uh, now that it believes that it can do it without serious consequences. Perhaps not surprisingly, according to US Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, North Korea is actively preparing for another nuclear test. Looking to the future, the chance for North Korea to denuclearize is likely to decrease even further. To begin with, the international security situation is likely to make enforcement of the non-proliferation regime even more difficult. The Russia-Ukraine war will continue to distract attention from the non-proliferation issue 
and increase Russia's resistance to additional UN sanctions against North Korea for developing nuclear weapons. This, the increasing tension between China and the US also made it almost impossible for the two countries to work together to persuade North Korea to stop its nuclear programs. As the US tries to rally allies to contain China and take China's stake out of the existing international order, China is quickly losing its interest in helping maintain the order that only benefits the US. That includes maintaining the international long proliferation regime. In the second place, the idea that closer cooperation between China, uh, between the US, Japan, and South Korea on uh, North Korea nuclear weapons is sufficient to tackle the North Korea nuclear issue, I think is ill-founded. The difference in political systems between the North Korea and the US means that North Korea would never trust any promise from uh, the US. And also, uh, this is especially true in the light of the fact that uh, how the US dealt with Libya after it gave up its nuclear programs. Accordingly, North Korea is unlikely to enter any agreement with, North, with the US without China's endorsement and reassurance. And given the state of China-US relations, China is unlikely to give its blessing and support to such kind of a deal. Without China's blessing and support, the deal is unlikely to be made. And even if it is made, it is unlikely to be enforced. Also, given the capabilities and geopolitical proximity of China, as, as long as China stands by North Korea, whatever pressures on North Korea, whether it's diplomatic, economic, or military, are unlikely to have much effect on North Korea. <clears throat> Finally, as long as China and the US remain at odds with each other, there is not much South Korea can do to pressure or persuade North Korea to give up its nuclear weapons. In the past, South Korea has tried both soft and tough approaches, such as the sunshine policy of Kim Yong sam Kim Dae-jung, and uh, uh, Ru Moon Hyun, or the more hardline policy of Lee min Bak. The only times when North Korea showed willingness to to, of compromise were times when China was on board with the US and South Korea in negotiating a deal with North Korea. The closest to a negotiated solution was in 2008. South Korea simply cannot get North Korea to take it seriously if China and the US remain divided in their approach to North Korea uh, nuclear issues. Given these and other factors, North Korea is unlikely, uh, is likely to hold on to its tough position despite international pressures to give up its nuclear weapons. Hence, the prospect of North Korea denuclearization in the foreseeable future is not bright. What can be done? In theory, three things can be done to alleviate the situation. First, the U.S. abandons its policy of confrontation with China, stops efforts to challenge China's core national interests, especially Taiwan, and try to work with China in a serious way where the interests of the two countries overlap, such as on the nuclear uh, issue in North Korea, of North Korea. Actually, we share a lot of interests and stakes together. But, as, but when, when we define our relationship in terms of ideology, all those stakes and interests are not, do not matter anymore. <laughs> it's like we are fighting a war over evil and <laughs> good. Uh, uh, so it becomes uh, irrational, uh, more and more irrational. Second, China assumes that it has huge stakes in the, in the current international order. And on that basis, 
is willing to work with other countries, including the US, to maintain that order. Third, other countries reject taking sides between China and the US and put pressures on the two countries to work together on issues of shared interests. In reality, however, none of these things appear to be realistic at the moment. The US appears to be determined to confront with, uh, and contain China. In doing so, it is taking away China's stakes in the existing international order, whether it is, on, it is trade and investment or territorial integrity or sovereignty, leaving China resentful and unwilling to cooperate with the US on anything. As China sees the stakes in the existing international order are challenged or taken away, such as uh, respect for its sovereignty and territorial integrity, it is more likely to take a different view of the international order and becomes less willing to help shore it up. This can be seen in its recently announced countermeasures to Pelosi's visit to China uh, to Taiwan. These measures do not only include cancellation of US-China military-to-military talks, which are designed to prevent a war by accident, but also suspension of cooperation in such areas as climate change and transnational crimes, which China used to believe it has a huge stake in working with the US and other countries. And this is uh, not the worst. During the recent Taiwan Strait crisis, the stirred up by uh, Pelosi, emotions ran high. A substantial group in both China and the US expressed their willingness to fight a war over Taiwan. Some politicians are trying to capitalize on this. Under the circumstances, there is a chance that uh, for war to erupt between China and the US if uh, the situation gets out of control. As long as they are meddling with the Taiwan issue, uh, I think uh, China-US relationship is very difficult to manage. And uh, so in the foreseeable future, uh, I think uh, it will be a miracle for them to manage to stabilize the relationship. <laughs> Uh, and the time is not on the side of positive development. Uh, the, in the, you know, with the midterm election and the next presidential election, who knows who is going to come, you know, to, to be uh, elected in the US uh, if Trump came back. So there's not much to expect in the near, in the near future. In the long run, in the light of this analysis, what is the chance for denuclearization in North Korea, uh, uh, of North Korea? I think it may be too absolute to say zero, but if there is a chance, the chance for that to happen in the foreseeable future is very, very small.